This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace. Now we share with each other. And let us sing or sing to ourselves hymn number 243, Jesus Christ is risen today. They're getting things wrong. 
And some among them have decided that maybe only Jesus died and was raised and that that wasn't what was going to happen to humans. And some people were saying that it didn't happen at all. So there was a lot of conflict and Paul has written this section of the letter to address that kind of thing. Um, and he says, basically, our faith is useless if we do not believe. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we of all people are most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, and the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all who will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the firstfruits, then, when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And our next hymn is hymn number 255, Now Let the Vault of Heaven Resound. They have had a rough two years, 
And maybe you could say that our hearts have been broken into pieces. And so, this day, I think we can give our broken hearts to God. Because God restores hearts. And that's one of the Easter messages. That God can restore hearts and does restore hearts. He takes our broken hearts. And he puts them back together again. So that we do not have to feel this is the way it ends. But that God is always at work in this world restoring our hearts. And that the sadness and the pieces are no longer there to be found. Just the heart that has been restored to us by God. So wherever you are feeling today, know that your heart is being restored by God right now, today. That is the Easter promise. Let us pray. Oh God, you are a God who can knit our hearts back together and make us whole again no matter what. Whether it's situations in this world or situations in our family or situations within ourselves. You knit us together like you did on the very first day. And you make us whole. And you send us out again. And you wait for us to come home. We pray all this through your Son, our risen Christ. Amen. This morning I am going to read from John's Gospel, and I'm going to read starting at the beginning of chapter 20. I think you know this one. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken away the Lord. They have taken him out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our next hymn is hymn number 258, Thine Be the Glory. So, 
This very helpful pharmacy assistant finally fixed the problem in their system. I now have no space between my two last names. I have become an advanced. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't sound like a foolproof plan to me. And I guess I will just have to wait and see if I am actually recognized by my new name the next time I go back to the pharmacy. Early on the first day of the week, when it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. In John's Gospel, it's just Mary that morning. What she thought she was doing there, no one will ever know for sure. With such a large stone in front of the entrance to the tomb, she couldn't have moved it by herself. But maybe something inside her made her want to be close to Jesus' body, as close as she could be. Like a pup, writes Barbara Brown Taylor, rooted to the last place she had seen her master with no idea what to do next. This is what first grief looks like. Being loyal and being lost, rooted, stuck, and no longer able to be part of the ebb and flow of life. Then comes the awful shock, the shock of an open tomb. And with this awful shock, there is a lot of frantic running. Mary running to the disciples, the disciples running to the tomb. One disciple stops at the entrance, the other runs straight into it. Chests heaving, breathing heavily, eyes adjusting to the dimness of the carved out stone cavern. If Mary's first impression is correct, then what more cruelty and disrespect have befallen the body of Jesus? It's hard to breathe with the thought of it. But the grave cloths were still there, not strewn around the tomb or taken with the removal or the stealing of the body. Instead, they were left behind, folded neatly, like the way a good guest strips the linen from the bed they have slept in and leaves them in a neat folded pile for washing. This seems far less like something that has been done to Jesus, rather something Jesus has done, has planned, has orchestrated. Scripture says of the disciple, he saw and believed. And although the very next line says they did not understand, what they believed, I think, was that God was still at work through Jesus. They just didn't know how yet. Therefore, Jesus was not lost to them as they had thought he was. Unbelief is thinking that Jesus is lost to us. Belief is knowing that Jesus is not lost to us and we are not lost to him. The first thing that the risen Christ does is step into that void with Mary. For she still thinks that Jesus has been taken away from her. And that the removal of his body, that means he has been taken away and she desperately wants him back. If only to know that she can come to the graveyard from time to time and plant flowers and talk to him thinking that she's talking to the gardener, and we all know that God is the greatest gardener, the first, the divine gardener. She asks this gardener where Jesus' body can be found. And Jesus says her name. Jesus says to her, Mary. And just like that, she knows. She knows that she has been recognized by her name. She knows that she has been seen. So she cannot be lost. She is not lost in the system. 
She is not lost in this big, cruel world. She is not lost to Jesus. And Jesus is not lost to her. She in turn responds to him with a name. She calls him Rabboni, which means teacher in Aramaic. But she has called him by his Friday name. She has called him what he had been to her and to the disciples. She has not yet understood that he has two names now, Jesus Christ. And those two names make a world of difference. Those two names mean she will never feel lost again. She is not to stay rooted in this place of grief. She is not to hold on to the past because something new and wonderful is happening. And she shouldn't even pause to keep it to herself for one more moment. Names, names are important. Jesus stood outside the grave and called Lazarus out by name. Come out, Lazarus, come out. The Romans, they made a sign and nailed it above Jesus' head on the cross. It said King of the Jews in three languages. But that was not a name. That was a title and a mockery of his real name the way the power players of the world are wont to do. And then we have the two disciples running to the tomb this morning, Peter and the other disciple. The other disciple who has intentionally left their name out of this part of the story. I want to leave you with some other words from Jesus, words he spoke about names and knowing us by our names, and calling us by our names. He said these words just before he went to Bethany to call his friend Lazarus out from the cold clutches death had on him. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay my life down for my sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. And they too will listen to my voice, and they there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And a short time after that again, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. May we all know in our hearts this Easter day, that the risen Lord has called us by our name, that the Lord has called us beloved, that the Lord is present and never ever lost to us, and the risen Lord has called us by name. We cannot be lost because we are already and always found. Amen.
recognizing how much you have given us in Christ Jesus. Bless these gifts so that they may spread the hope and joy we feel this day to those who have not yet tasted your kindness. With our gifts, we offer ourselves to you in the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God of power and possibility, you broke open the tomb that held our Lord. Now break open your church. Tense and tired after months of pandemic restrictions, worried over differences and disagreements, uncertain about the way ahead in mission and service. Guide us with your wise and creative spirit. God of resurrection and new life, you broke into the hearts of Jesus' fearful friends. Now break into our relationships with one another. Where they are vibrant and life-giving, nurture them. Where they are strained by misunderstanding or neglect, re reconcile them. Heal us with your merciful and engaging spirit. God of might and mercy, you broke open the schemes of those who stood in the way of your love. Now break open the governance of your world. Stir the minds and hearts of the leaders to work for justice and equitable sharing. Where laws are corrupt, where deceptions masquerade as truth, and where people suffer on the, uh, under the schemes of those who lust for power, confront people with your spirit of truth and compassion. God of healing and hope, you broke the bonds of death which tried to shackle new life. Now break into situations of illness, pain, grief, and loss. Wherever people are sick, in body, mind, or spirit, and wherever people mourn the loss of a loved one or a cherished future, embrace each one with your spirit of comfort and courage. God of Easter renewal and resurrection, you have broken into our lives again this day. Break into all our moments of celebration and joy that we may know you have called us, each one of us, by name. We pray now for individuals and loved ones who are personal to us. By your Spirit, give us gratitude, generosity, and the grace to understand each other. In humility, we pray the words Christ Jesus taught us to pray together.
Thank you. 